conference is brought to you by Allstate. Allstate, you're in good hands. And now, here's the Sooner head football coach, Brent Venables. All right, who's up? <laughs> Ryan, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Brent, obviously, you got to look at the depth chart just a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. One of the things that stands out is that running back. And not only that Marcus is, is listed at the top there, but that Tawi is, is there with him. Specifically with Tawi, what, what, what has he done uh, to, to earn that spot? And how different of a player is he now than he was a year ago? Again, he, he's been really uh, consistent, uh, physical, available which is your best ability, is availability. Uh, he's just been a, a guy that you can count on. You know, very, really dependable, tough, physical, does a lot of the little things right. And uh, he plays really strong behind his pads and has always fallen forward. So those are the reasons why he's created opportunity for himself. And again, we've had some guys that are limited, you know, here and there, nothing. Uh, Long term, but that's created opportunity for him. He's taken he's taken advantage of it. You know, I think that's the biggest thing. Not an indictment on really anybody else, uh, other than it's a statement to to really what he's done uh, with the work that he's put in and his productivity with the opportunities he's been he's been given. Gavin and Devontae, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yep. Eric Bailey. Brent, do you still celebrate big recruiting wins? Like you did when you were a big, uh, big, uh, young assistant coach here at Oklahoma. Like when you won Gerald McCoy, Tommy Harris. Do you still celebrate him as an old coach? Sure. Yeah. No doubt. And again, um, this is a player's game. Players make plays. You know, my job is to recruit and have the best, strongest roster I can, we can put together. And uh, anytime you get, you know, an elite player, uh, it's you put a lot of uh, hard work into the process. You know, sometimes years go into recruiting a prospect. So when it goes your way, obviously there's reason to celebrate. And you celebrate hard, you just don't celebrate long. How big were, were year two and year three in the recruiting cycles back in Oklahoma when you got here in 99? And then also at Clemson on the defensive side of the ball uh, when you got there? Well, again, I think it's, I think year two and year three. Uh, you know, to your uh, question, is is about development with players that you do have and uh, creating credibility uh, with that, and that allows you to recruit better players, uh, develop relationships, show a you know body of work that uh, is worthy of you know, the attention uh, of recruits, and but as you you know the story. You've already watched the movie here at, at Oklahoma uh, and what we were able to, to build. And then again, uh, to a certain degree, uh, took a young roster uh, at Clemson and uh, with some early success, uh, was able to, we were able to recruit uh, at a pretty good level. And again, a few five-star type guys, uh, but many uh, three-star type guys that uh, became exceptional players. And I think evaluation process is critical uh, and that we we don't recruit off the top ranking list. That's not where we start at all. Um, and you know we really try to utilize our camp as an opportunity to evaluate. We don't run a combine, we don't run 40s. We don't measure them, we don't put them on a scale. We, we do football and uh, try to evaluate people and that's a big part of all of it you know is finding you know the most talented guys that also are uh, great leaders and guys that love the the game and love the work and uh, uh, have a sense of maturity to them and have a good support system all those kind of things mm -hmm. You to, to bring him in as a transfer, and what role do you expect him to play in your secondary? In instincts, physicality, uh, experience, and then once you visited with him, uh, very mature, focused, driven, quiet, just about his business. So felt culturally it would uh, fit in. Never asked for 
any guarantees whatsoever. I just wanted a fresh start, wanted an opportunity to play in this defensive system. And uh, he had great, his dad was amazing. <laughs> he's one of those perfect dads. He get, you know, I'm not sure what he's waiting on. He, he was standing right there. I'm not sure what he's waiting on. If it was me, I already signed up. And uh, that was kind of how that, pro that recruiting process went. It's usually never that easy, but he'd done, his dad had been a big fan of uh, our defensive system for a while. So that really, uh, that helped. With that age and also the number of starts that he has, what can that bring, do you feel like, to that free safety position? Just consistency. That's what wins for you. A guy that, you know, I'll take that over anything. And uh, when, when guys are going to do what they're supposed to do, when they're supposed to do it, how they're supposed to do it, not try to make a play, not try to guess, go through their process and, uh, you know, let the defense work for you. That's really what we go through. It's not real complicated. Mm -hmm. Gary, you're a year and a half into this and taking on the role of head coach. You'd always been involved with the defense. You're still involved with the defense. Critiquing yourself, where do you think you needed to improve on and what are you doing different in terms of balancing those roles? Uh, just be more efficient, you know, overall. Uh, be more efficient. So. To me, trying to um, to uh, not do what I know how to do uh, as well as I can do it, kind of being involved isn't to me isn't uh, where I need to be. I need to be completely involved uh, defensively. Not that they need my help, but that's um, that's what I know. That's how I got to this position. And I think a year ago uh, was certainly uh, involved, but not to the depth that I think that I felt like I needed to be, you know, after evaluating all of it. So uh, it's going to be a collective thing, just like every other defensive staff I've ever been a part, you know, the success uh, and decisions, uh, you know, it will be collective. Uh, a collective effort, and uh, everybody has a, their role. But um, this is something that I feel like that's one area that I know I, without question, I can do a good job of, of um, um, just being another uh, a voice, another mind, and another body, an able body to to help out. Your relationship with Ted, how is it last season? Is it going to be any different this year? No, it's. It's great, yeah, no different whatsoever. Ted's a, again, a, one of the reasons, you know, Ted is here just because of his depth of experience, uh, both as a coordinator, head coach, and, you know, a bunch of different conferences, three different conferences. And, uh, you know, he knows what it looks like. So, uh, but he's got a, he understands what being a great teammate's all about, which is, again, I expect that of all of our staff. It's a, it's vital that uh, we have a staff that, you know, cohesively un understands that and sees eye to eye that way. So uh, it won't won't change, you know, any. George? Yeah, hey, Brent. Uh, Justin Harrington obviously has had a really unique career path here. What has he shown to earn a captain role and also the starting role at Cheetah? Again, consistency, his work ethic, uh, as a vocal leader, uh, competes at an incredibly you know high level he's been consistent uh, as I said uh, with his body of work and his commitment to understanding the details and then uh, consistently has made plays you know since we started back up you know both in the spring and the summer and then you know in fall camp but he's long he's athletic he's explosive super aggressive he can tackle uh, and it, he's really starting to understand uh, all of it around him, which is how he's coming into his own as a player, as a result. Ryan, all right. Talking to Ethan Downs last night, since working under you and Coach Chavis, he's talked about kind of this passion for coaching. Right. What have you seen as far as him being able to work with the young guys, that defensive end room, to help not only bring him along, but them along through the spring? His football IQ has really improved. and. 
again a year ago at this time he's just trying to learn the plays himself so he's worked incredibly hard and as of as well as all those guys just in understanding not only you know what they do but why they do it and that's a very empowering thing as a player uh, you play at a different level of confidence when you understand the why behind it and maybe what the other guys around you uh, are doing so that's he's paying it forward you know he's a he's got a servant heart naturally and so that's not a surprise you know to to see him as one of those older guys if you will uh, you know helping out the younger guys you know and trying to get them to the shortcuts and that's what you want to build from a stability standpoint on a roster you know that's what it that's what it looks like Wait to, game wait to ask you about special teams and so mm -hmm. if you could dive into special teams and you feel like athletically you're going to be a good coverage unit as well. If you could update us anything on Julie at this point, that would be nice too. Thank yeah, you. again, special teams, there's again a lot of battles. We got a really good competitive depth. You know, we played several true freshmen on it a year ago. We'll have some freshmen that will be sprinkled uh, on there. We've got to be more efficient. Uh, as we, we talk about every part of our program, I know I've talked about uh, situationally, maybe in the, uh, you know, pinning people inside the, you know, their own 10 yard line, for example, and we're in those pooch situations. We had 10 touchbacks uh, last year and we, we gave up 10 touchdowns uh, as a result. And so we got to be uh, much better there consistently and covering kicks and all. I think four of our five losses, we gave up an explosive kickoff return at a really uh, critical time in the game, which in one score games, it turns into points quickly uh, when you let people get it out. I think West Virginia, maybe we had a chance to go in at halftime, uh, you know, having shut them out. And uh, we give up, uh, have a, a nice touchdown drive. And maybe we were up at 13 nothing at that time. And we give up a, a long kickoff return, and three plays later, bam, 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 they they score a touchdown, create tons of momentum going into halftime, and we're oh, just not good enough to overcome, you know, mistakes like that. We misfit a, it's like an ISO or a split zone or a power play, a kickoff return. You got to fit it the right way. You got to set hard edges. You got to have fold players, and a, you know, and all those little things that it takes to to stop a, a split flow play that you know we make look easy. You got to do the same thing on a on a kickoff team. So, uh, you know, we've got to be much, much better uh, uh, consistently in our kicking game. And there's some things that were really good. You know, we talked about, you know, and, you know, I think in the, for those three point losses, we missed field goals. Uh, one of the games we missed two field goals. Some of that's not Zach uh, situationally or condition wise, but or maybe uh, I think we had one that was uh, over 50 yards and uh, just barely missed it. So I got a lot of faith in Zach. Uh, obviously, we had a new punter. Uh, we're trying to figure that out. Josh Plaster and Luke Elzinga and uh, Ashton are all battling it out. And they all have different uh, strengths and weaknesses. And uh, so that'll continue to work itself out. We really like uh, the guys that are uh, be rotating at, as far as um, you know return game. And I uh, feel like we have some guys that can uh, you know, really explosive players that can be incredibly dangerous with the ball in their hand. So I'm really excited about, you know, seeing uh, a group of guys, uh, special teams wise, it's going to be a lot more uh, efficient in creating field position. Field position is, as we peeled it back last year, uh, we did not win the field position battle uh, like a good team, you know, needs to win it. And so the, talk about the hidden yards uh, that you know, how you can be much better. Uh, those are some things that we've really spent a lot of time on, you know, from a special team standpoint. And Julie, she's doing good, you know, uh, probably uh, looking at at some point in time here in the near future, we'll probably have to do some uh, chemotherapy. Uh, so, um, but uh, things have gone, you know, uh, well up, up to this point, all things considered. So appreciate you asking. Coach, aside from the personal things, looking back one year ago, say right now, you know, game week, what are the biggest differences in how you feel going into this? Confidence, comfort, concerns, that type of thing? Yeah, I've never one, been one to um, lack confidence just because 
the preparation that you put in, the work that you put in, you know, develops a, a confidence and a clear vision for where you're going. But uh, anxious, and uh, you didn't have the ability to anticipate in a lot of things. Uh, but like again, a good play caller or a good quarterback or a, you know a, a great blitzing linebacker, you have an anticipation of the snap count. You know, quarterback will, knows that guy's not open, but I know he's going to be open or the play caller that anticipates the max blitz in a certain situation. I didn't have this Rolodex of, of depth and experience to rely on. So just a lot of um, anxious uh, moments that, um, again, you plan for, but nothing like doing it. So maybe to a certain degree, uh, you know, there's now there's a level of anticipation with uh, – you know what the you know the game day is going to be like from an organizational standpoint, or uh, the Friday walkthrough, things, all of those kinds of things. And again, some of the tough decisions that you got to make, both um, programmatically or uh, staffing, or certainly you know with you know game day itself. You know those are you got again whatever it is, 12 plus months of experience now. I think that's probably the biggest. You spent most, if not all, of your career as a coordinator on game days on the sideline, right? What did you like about that vantage point, about the communication you could have down there that, that kept you down there? Yeah, just I'm a people person. I like to, you know, you try to get into the, a lot of those uh, conversations and challenge and the emotion, um, the intensity, the passion of it, uh, leading people in those moments. I like to do that, and I like to look in someone's eyes. And, you know, I like to be hands on when it comes to uh, demanding intensity and focus and passion and energy, uh, having an edge, developing confidence. I think you can you have the ability to do that when somebody's lost their mind uh, or, you know, maybe they've experienced some failure to be able to get them back where they need to be. Those are things that I really enjoy about the game and being uh, on the sideline, uh, I like to uh, be a part of that um, with with the players in particular and the coaches, you know, for that matter. But uh, just being, you know, hands on, you know, on the field and being able to be the guy with the marker with adjustments and things like that, you know, really like I feel like it can create a, a level of comfort for the players, you know, taking it from the practice field to, to game day. From year one to year two in, in your current job as a head coach, what did you learn and maybe what did you identify in the off season as it related game management, clock management? Oh, yeah, I think right? I've answered that a lot. Um, so, I mean, again, I've said it all along. Again, if, if you're trying to generalize it uh, without getting into all the weeds, but again, just being more efficient and, uh, you know, w to me, being more efficient helps you. So if you're more efficient, say, for example, you know, we went for several fourth downs uh, early and didn't make them, you know. And after watching, you know, your lack of ability to move people at critical times, uh, you know, now obviously you don't have as much confidence in those situations. So you got we becoming more efficient, avoiding maybe some of those situations being better, uh, on earlier downs, all of those things, when they use the word efficiency, is what we're talking about. But, uh, you know, there's a thing called analytics, and, and sometimes it can be a really good thing when it's working in, in your favor. But uh, when you're not making layups uh, to, um, to go by the analytics, uh, you got to go back and look at it. And part of it, a year ago, you know, we, we couldn't stop anybody. And so there's this cumulative effect you know, in, in regards to some of those, you know, situations where you you feel like you need to extend a drive and uh, stay on the field. And, and, and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. And so that uh, that affects your decision making. Uh, but so to me, get better on defense, which is I said X number of months ago, and I've said it multiple times since, you know, get better on defense. What does that mean? It means to get better on defense, all of it. So uh, I feel like we've done that, and uh, but some of it I didn't have to learn. I just knew it when I was in the middle of it. You know, we're not good at X, Y, Z. We got to get better at X, Y, Z. Uh, precision, timing, physicality, execution. Uh, 
and then again some of the you know decisions uh, again uh, when you're using timeouts all of those things you go back and you look at all of that and there's ways that you can do that obviously you're looking at your situations and how that what affected you again for example I think there are several times in plus territory and fourth down we we chose to punt the ball it's a great decision if you pin them inside the 10 if you get a touchback and next thing you know it turns into a net 25 yard punt and they scored 10 times when you did that so not a good decision uh, but you pin them uh, inside the 10 you know they've got a you know a 15 percent chance of scoring now and uh, you know when you're playing better defense uh, you can expect to get the ball at midfield after forcing a punt in that situation. So, uh, just got to get better in in every way, both on the field and off the field. So we've got a bunch of people still on the list. I'm going to ask you to limit yourselves to one question the rest of the way. Sorry. Yeah, Brent. A lot of the recruiting wins this summer feature in-state kids. You said from the jump, you're going to work inside out. What's that process been like trying to repair, rebuild the relationships with a lot of the in, in-state high schools? I don't think it's been really hard. You just do what you do. You're genuine uh, in those relationships. You're intentional about being present. You know, it's one thing to talk about. It's another thing to do it. And so uh, being accessible uh, to the high school coaches, uh, welcoming, and then staying in constant, you know, communication. There's lots of ways to do that, uh, but nothing better than having a, a body present. Uh, in the school, you know, we're not offering guys out of out of charity. You know, these are guys that we feel like can help us win at a really high level, and it's been fun. You know, I really enjoy the whole recruiting process, the the, the tough losses along the road, uh, as as well as the great wins. You know, it's a it's an exciting uh, thing for me. Uh, you know, my vision is you know being able to bring in young men that people that love the Oklahoma Sooners are going to be proud of and uh, that you know these are young men that deserve an opportunity to play at you know a school of uh, that's represented again the excellence that Oklahoma has for such such a long time so nobody understands that better than you know the young men the coaches and the players in the state of Oklahoma. Brent, I wanted to ask you about Gentry Williams you mentioned a few weeks ago you know the opportunity was there for him and you know growing confidence, things like that. Maybe what did he do during fall camp to solidify your confidence in him? And how did that position battle at that second quarterback spot, how did you see that? Well, it's still, I'll be honest, it's still really ongoing. You know, I expect to play a lot of guys at, at the corner position. Uh, we got tremendous youth there, and we got to get these guys grown up quickly. Uh, but Gentry, um, he's a, got tremendous work ethic, really smart, he cares, he's passionate, he's tough. He responds to tough coaching. Um, he's a great teammate. He's willing to l listen and learn. So he's v really humble. Uh, players love him, you know, because he's about his business uh, off the field and on the field. He's a doer, not a talker. It doesn't say a whole lot, uh, but when he does speak, he he's about the right stuff. Uh, so um, it's been fun to watch uh, these guys grow up. And uh, and have you know every one of them could probably tell you some tough things that they've gone through. I'm talking about all the the young guys that we're talking about, uh, whether it's injury or whether it's some failure or or the struggle to you know fight and compete, you know to create opportunity for themselves. And so it's been a fun group. Jay's done a great job, and and these young men. Uh, again, it's a good list. It's Dolby and Vickers, and you know Jacoby and Kenai Walker and. Uh, course uh, Gentry and uh, you know and, and Woody's done an amazing job I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't you know mention the leadership that Woody uh, has poured into these guys uh, he's as good of a leader as we have on the team and these guys really look up to and respect Woody uh, that's been a really been a, a fun group you know uh, Jaden Rose another uh, again young one that big long and fast so uh, Josiah Wagner, you know, I know we talked about him a lot. So that's a group that's been a little bit banged up through fall camp and have had to fight through some uh, just, again, some nagging kind of injuries, nothing uh, significant uh, in nature. But it's, you know, it makes every rep count when they are available. 
Brent, a year ago on third and one and two, you had to really count on your guys up front, both sides of the ball. Some games really good, some games not so much, and it, and it bit you a little bit. I take it you're optimistic that you'll be better this year. I'd like you to. I'd like to know why. Assuming that's the case, or maybe you need to see it for yourself. I, yeah, I mean I, that 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 last thing, you know, I'm, that's part of it too. Uh, you see for myself, you know. You, you feel like you'll be better uh, for lots of reasons. You know, we're a more physical team, I believe, at the point of attack, particularly on defense. Uh, and where we were, uh, I thought we were uh, not necessarily not physical on offense, but on defense, I did not think we were, I thought we were soft uh, in short yardage situations. I got knocked off the ball, uh, second level, didn't support like we needed support. Uh, so a lot to, uh, you know, not uh, be real happy about, but I think we're more knowledgeable as well as more physical. Our football IQs improved, and uh, so those are the. I mean, if if those aren't uh, those are as good of reasons as you could possibly you know come up with, and um, we got to be better at the point of attack. There's no uh, question about it. But I do feel like we've helped ourselves with the development of the guys that are on our roster, and in you know, with some of the portal guys that we uh, have brought on. Since you've been here, a lot of people pay attention to recruiting classes with portal guys, and they got to play a role. But you named some guys, whether it's Marcus Major, Justin Harrison, was even down to the all-conference preseason. Some guys who've kind of been here who can play some key roles. How important is those guys who've kind of been here, been through some stuff, that they play a part? Yeah, it's critical. That's our, that's our experience. You know, uh, it's critical. And this is a game of development. And it's what it's all about. And you can't fail in de development but do great in every other thing and expect to have a good football team. Development is foundational. So those guys being a better version of themselves, those guys that you're talking about, it's to me it's everything to completing the team. Uh, you know, just because you take a highly recruited guy out of the portal or a highly recruited guy out of high school doesn't make you better necessarily what can they do how can they execute you know uh how can they you know are they are they have the ability to play with aggressiveness and confidence uh so all of that goes back to you know the coaching part of it too that's a it's a two-way street from that standpoint but they play a big part into it um you know really counting on you know whether it's again a stutzman or it's a woody or it's a key lawrence uh, Billy Bowman, you know, again, uh, Ethan Downs, Harrington, you know, all those guys. It's they're a critical part of all of it. So the far right, second row, John Hoover. Yeah, Brent. Um, every position battle is probably fun for the coaches to some level, uh, but when you've got one that lasts all month, throughout the spring, all summer, goes through all of training camp, and comes down to the wire like cheetah and cornerback, is that? Like more intense, you get more eyes on film, you get more eyes watching them in practice. Can you kind of describe that process when it's real close like that? I don't know if it's more. I, I think that you should put the same intent in all of it, whether it's, you know, you don't have quite as much competition because it's really about making guys better. Uh, sometimes you happen to make multiple guys better. We have a little more depth, but it's all about improving guys, and, you know, getting them better, developing, correcting, teaching, coaching, uh, scheming, strategizing with everybody. But to me, it just, you know, I think it's uh, more exciting, you know, you know, for for the players too. I think they understand there's more of a sense of urgency, it, you know, that the competition brings out the best in everybody. Every play matters. And, you know, I, I think it's a quote unquote luxury to have, you know, multiple starters, you know, co-starters. That's not a bad thing. And um, you, you got to be have the right kind of guys that, that can handle that, you know, that are, again, we-centered and team-centered, not me-centered. So that's a, that's a big part of it, too, you know, and I don't take that for granted at all. I think that's inherently, as humans, we're, we're selfish by nature. So we got to do a great job of nurturing, you know, the uh, team aspect and uh, getting our guys to buy into whatever your opportunity is, make the most of it, be ready, and uh, you know, and maximize the moment when you have your opportunity. So that's—I don't know if I answered your question, but 
it's not a real uh, what's that like. It's it's constantly ongoing. Tom Williams, he still a walk-on? Tom he Williams is. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yep. Thanks to John. We're going to Hey, Brian, I want to ask you about Billy Bowman being back on pick return game. Just for a guy like him, I've heard him this time last season, just how much of that decision is gauging how comfortable he is with being back there, and just what have you seen out of him in terms of his willingness to be a part of that? Billy's willingness? Yeah, I mean, he's – it's uh, – you know, Billy begs to be a part of it. And, again, he's – Incredibly explosive. He's wide open. He's got great instincts for it. It's very natural. Uh, you know, he can really accelerate and run through trash. So, you know, I know he got banged up last year. Um, we've got a little more depth there. And, and again, uh, you know, we lost five games by one score. And so I don't think we're in any kind of position whatsoever to, oh, let's save him. Save him for what? You know, you know, we're trying to win. And we just talked about field position was something that we didn't win. Uh, we were actually very poor uh, last year in creating field position. And you, it, it's amazing what uh, an additional two-yard average can do for you, winning and losing and scoring and not scoring, uh, what that will do for you. And that's a real thing. So, you know, we want all the, the weapons that, you know, we can uh, have back there to, you know, to score and create field position. Mm-hmm. Brent, on the uh, on the D line with Rondell, what's what attributes have made it so easy for him to come in and lead and win his starting spot? And what's impressed you most about Jonah's transition to tackle? Yeah, Rondell is um, again he's physical, he's heavy-handed. You know, he's got a lot of natural ability, good instincts. He's played a lot of ball and experience. So again, he knows the difference between max protection and a and a zone cutoff play. You know, so he can key out quickly on a Max Pro. He knows when it's going to be a boot as opposed to, a, you know, a, a split flow play. Just he's got – those are things that come from both experience and just a natural feel for the game. And uh, and he's just consistent. Um, and you said about – Jonah, what would you ask about him? Like moving from defense into tackle. Yeah, it's been a better – it's a better position for him. Uh, for his physical attributes. Certainly he's had a little bit of weight, uh, but he plays quicker inside and uh, has used his hands well and plays with good pad level. He's been, he's been really good inside. So it's, uh, it's been a, a win-win with the addition of some uh, additional edge players. Uh, it's really it's made us better. And then Jonah's a guy that's a great leader. And, uh, a year ago, I don't think that we had great leadership inside. And, you know, every defense, it starts. If you're going to have a good defense, man, you got to be strong in, you know, up the middle of the defense. And, you know, there shouldn't be any position that doesn't have great leadership, in my opinion. And so we needed to get better there, you know. And so whatever great leadership means, it doesn't mean a guy that just shows up every day. I'm talking about guys that strain, guys that lead, guys that bring out the best in people around them, guys that like to compete, guys that uh, like to be the, the example. Uh, they handle tough, hard coaching. Uh, they handle adversity well. Uh, they're going to be a model of consistency. Those are all leadership attributes. And uh, we needed to get better uh, there. And, and that's not the only position that needed to get better. But uh, you asked about that position. I feel like Jonah uh, takes the, you know, that part <clears throat> of, his, of his game and his things that are uh, his strengths and made that, that group better, as well as some other guys. That's amazing, Tom. When you have an established quarterback like Dylan and then bring in a player of Jackson's caliber, how do you kind of balance finding the opportunity for Jackson and getting into experience without crushing his development? And do you take anything away from what you saw firsthand when you were at Clemson and had a couple of those guys come through when you were on staff? Yeah, I mean, again, you want you want to develop your roster. And so guys got to play, so you got to have a game plan for it. Uh, get guys ready. I mean, he's our number two quarterback, so we don't have any other than the spring game. You don't have any real game experience, and you don't want the first time that they're in a, a real game uh, to be when you don't have any other options. So uh, we've got to do a good job of managing that. And there's collectively, all of us have a uh, kind of a vision for what that's going to look like uh, at the appropriate time. And uh, but 
you know, Jackson's a, a hardworking, smart, instinctive, highly skilled guy that um, has a tremendous ceiling. Uh, he's not, uh, you know, he he'll be the first one to tell you that he's got a long ways to go to to be where he wants to be. Uh, but he's willing to put the work in. Uh, he's got a great perspective, and uh, he'll be ready when he's given his opportunity, and he'll learn and grow through all of it. But that's how he'll develop is, is by having those opportunities. There's no doubt that Dylan is our undisputed you know, quarterback and uh, for all the reasons that you all know. And, uh, but you know, that's something that we've, you know, we know that Dylan won't be here next year. So uh, we've got to get, uh, you know, we've got to prepare for that day as well and so like all positions uh they gotta have a you know a, a plan for that and we do time for a few more third row foot front yeah you'd mentioned co-starters earlier I, I see trace ford when he transferred in he transferred into a position that was actually pretty stacked and yet he's worked his way up to be a co-starter um what has he brought what do you see and why is he in that role I, I, I don't feel like we were stacked, uh, you know, I, and I don't say that as an indictment on any player. Um, you know, there might have been able bodies, but I just look at every position on our defense and there was nobody stacked anywhere. And stacked to me means quality, depth, proven ability at a really high level. And, uh, and when we weren't there on defense at, at any position. So... Uh, he he looked for he found opportunity and uh, and so you know what what he brings to the table he's got a high motor he's crazy explosive uh, he's physical at the point of attack he's a cerebral guy uh, he allows you to coach him hard he demands a lot from himself he's willing to put in the time uh, to learn uh, the X's and the O's so that he can play fast he's done a great job of doing that his teammates have helped him do that. Uh, all the, the guys that were here, uh, they've done a great job of helping him, again, to those shortcuts that sometimes it's uh, <clears throat> made the players know a little bit more uh, than the coach on how to get there quickly uh, from a player standpoint, or maybe the delivery's different and they take it better. But whatever the case may be, he's, uh, again, a guy that has played some football, so he, he relies on some of the experience, and he's a confident guy in his ability, uh, but humble for the process that it takes to play at a high level. So uh, he was willing to – he didn't uh, pout when he started off as the, you know, a third group guy, maybe a fourth group guy. He's at the back of the line. He's earned his – uh, his opportunity, you know, every step of the way. And when he has been given some opportunity, he made the most of those small windows uh, like you want all of your players to do. Uh, to, all right, don't worry about how many snaps. When you get an opportunity to get in there, execute. Your job is to know what to do, play fast, play aggressive. Uh, and he's done that. So uh, he's responded uh, well and has created value and opportunity for himself. It's not in – uh, to me, as a coach, our responsibility is to make sure that the, you know uh, that we have integrity to everything that we do from a procedural standpoint, how you earn opportunity to play. And, and I don't want to recruit anybody. I never will uh, you know, make promises other than an opportunity to, to, to you know, earn uh, value and an opportunity to, you know, to, to create uh, you know, a position for yourself on the team. So, uh, you know, Hard work is what it's all about. That's what he's brought, you know, and and it's responded. It's made everybody else, uh, even several of the returning players, it's made them better. And that's what you you, you hope by creating, you know, the depth. Uh, far left, James Jackson. Coach, Jaron Kinnick kind of earned the top spot for you all in the linebacker position. What do you see about his growth and, you know, how he's got to this point now from where he started when he first got here? Yeah, it's been just tremendous. It's one of those graphs it, you have – and there's been, you know, some, you know, it's in the green, you know, for some small dips uh, along the way. But he literally had no foundation, you know, just a, a, a skilled player um, that, again, I bet you, I bet you it was maybe 15 plays uh, that I evaluated on, on defense uh, that he just blitzed off the edge. Maybe not that. Uh, maybe not that many. And um, so that's not, an, again, an indictment on anyone, but he just had a lot that he didn't know. Every, you know, talking about the first time, there was a lot of first times. 
and to like get in a stance. You know, where do I put my eyes? What foot do I step with? You know, how do I know the difference between run and pass and a screen and a boot and a power and a counter and a, you know, RPO? You just, oh, geez, it's been, and he has worked tirelessly, you know, to put him in a position to be uh, capable of, of playing good quality football. And he's nowhere close to what he's going to be. Uh, it's a young group, and I could really say the same thing about a lot of them. But many of them grew up playing linebacker, uh, but Jaron uh, didn't. But he's really improved. Um, he'll he'll make tremendous improvement during the season. Have uh, uh, I think that group will really make tremendous improvement. You know, on the season, just it's a group of guys that haven't played much linebacker uh, at the collegiate level. So, uh, but it's a group of guys that man, they, we've got great uh, cohesion and chemistry. Uh, tremendous toughness, great work ethic. Uh, they really strain. They understand the value of straining, the improvement, our ability just to go through fundamentals and understanding, you know, how, how to play linebacker with the right kind of fundamentals and the strain that it takes at practice. That's fun for me. When they, when they do that, then they have a chance. And uh, that's where it all starts, you know, how you practice, the mindset, the attitude, understanding you're the backbone of the – of the of the defense, every coach should say that about their players. You know, uh, for me, I've always taken great pride in the linebackers leading the way, and we've got. I love the depth there. Love the group. Jaron has been a big part of that. Danny's been a, uh, an amazing leader for all of them, and he has tremendous will. But then you got a guy like a, a Harrington that, you know, he's a hybrid linebacker, and man, he is just plugged right in. You know, I've had the. Uh, the former DB that gets in those linebacking group, and he's like, "Man, I, you know, I'm not a linebacker now." And uh, I said, hey, "That guy, you got to trick him." I know you're, you know, a cheetah. <laughs> and they, oh, however, you you got to get them to, you know, how to not have twinkle toes in the box. You know, you got to be able to play behind your pads. And I don't want the people that can say, "Well, we'll just go formation into the boundary. We'll make him have to tackle somebody. We'll put him in the B gap." Good. That's what I say. You know, train them and develop them so that that can be an advantage for you too. It's not a, a disadvantage. And so, we've worked really hard at doing that. And again, a guy like Canick on how to play in the box and how to take on blocks and who's going to block me on certain schemes. There's a lot going on there. And again, he'll be baptized during the season. Uh, I, I have no uh, illusions of, of grandeur. That's going to happen too. But what I, I bet on people, and and we've got an amazing group of people in the linebacker room. And it's not a coach just touting his guys. That's not how it is. If 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 they weren't a group of guys that uh, weren't about the things I'm talking about, you know, I wouldn't say it. And uh, so I've got. Uh, tremendous excitement for that group, uh, Jaron and his development. But uh, for us to play at a, at the level that you know I expect us to play at, it's not going to be just Jaron. Um, uh, there's going to be we've got to have the quality depth there. And again, I like uh, Kobe was a little bit banged up, missed um, several practices, but uh, he's back and at it. And uh, what he's been able to do, Danny plays some Mike as well. Uh, but he's our, our, our will linebacker, but he also plays the mic. And then Phil Pachotti has done a, a, a fantastic job. I, I, Connor Neer, uh, you know, he's really done a great job of, of jumping in the competition and being humble and fitting. You know, that can't be an easy thing for a guy that was a four-year starter, a multi-year All-American, a multi-year national champion, to give up a lot to come and to have to start over and learn in many ways. I love that. Uh, his courage and his confidence, uh, his toughness in doing so, that's added value to our group. But it also made everybody else up their game. And all right, good. That's was the intent. You know, m make everybody better. And if something happens, uh, whether it's injury or uh, we lose our mind temporarily, which will happen occasionally. I mean, you have some uh, a guy, you know, like a again a guy like a Connor Neer can go in there at any point in time in a game and and do well. Uh, so excited about you know what he brings to that that group as well, and then you all saw you know Kip Lewis out here you know in the spring game. He's a ball magnet. He knows where that ball is. His only thing that's you know kept him back. He's just not a big guy. He's got a nice frame, 
six two, uh, broad shoulders, but uh, you know, two hundred and twelve pounds. Uh, but he plays bigger. You know, he's a guy that plays bigger. He can really uh, strike, and his his timing and his ability to you know uh, speed to contact is is different. Uh, and then you got Lewis Carter, Shane Witter, and some other guys that really like to to run and and hit. So again, we couldn't have these conversations a year ago um, at all. And then uh, we tried to find three guys that could line up and play linebacker, and uh, we really didn't have you know backups a year ago. So Jaron's in a much different place. He played outside. I I wanted to have the three freshmen that we brought in a year ago not back each other up, knowing that okay. And, Probably in due time, uh, you know, one of them's going to have to move. But uh, so last year, because we didn't have depth, we put Kanick at the Cheetah, and we put Kobe, who's played his whole life as a as a middle linebacker at middle linebacker, and then we had uh, Kip Lewis uh, at will. And so Kobe and Kip are still at their positions, and we moved Jaron, you know, inside with the addition of, you know, Harrington, McCullough, you know, Sammy Omasigo, uh, you know, Pearson. Bowen, all those guys. Yeah. Just wanted to ask you provide an update on uh, a couple guys that were rehabbing and recovering during fall camp or any other injury updates before Saturday. You can't be general. You got what? Give me something specific. Uh, Jacob Sex and Walter. Rose yeah. Are, um, yeah. Walters. He's on there as a starter, and uh, he's doing great. You know, really worked hard to overcome his. And just rehabbing, and uh, so he's been fantastic for since the start of fall camp. And then uh, Sexton is really close to um, getting the the green light, and uh, we just want to make sure he hasn't he's had no setbacks uh, whatsoever. And uh, we feel really good about his progress. Um, probably would be available here um, in the next week or so. And then you know we do feel good about guys like. Uh, Caden Green and Jake Taylor, uh, 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 Parks, uh, his ability to play tackle as well. So we just don't want we want to be very uh, uh, patient and not put uh, Jacob in uh, harm's way. Even though he's he gets a full release again. Typically speaking, on an ACL, it usually takes you about 12 months. Everybody's different, but 12 months to get back to where you were from a confidence, from a strength and a flexibility and and so uh, we don't have this 12-month plan, but just want to be uh, mindful of that, you know, and then losing a couple of tackles after this year uh, in all likelihood what that, uh, you know, we're just trying to play the long ball, you know, across the board. Curtis? Uh, Brett, the, the tight end room looks a lot different than this time of year ago. Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel about that, group? feel good about it. Uh, again, Stog, you know, is a guy that's played, again, a ton of football. Uh, you know, he's a great weapon in the throwing game and uh, does a good job in, you know, putting a hat on people in the box and out on the perimeter and uh, really can be a, a great weapon for us. And then, you know, uh, Blake Smith is a guy that's got, again, experience and then uh, and familiarity with uh, Joe John uh, as well. Going to have to have some guys, you know, after that, well, a year ago we had the two tight ends, you know, Daniel Parker and uh, Braden, and that was that was it. Uh, their forte was really uh, physical. Uh, they were really physical players. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, th these are guys that uh, really catch the ball well in space and uh, can do some things in a passing game in addition to the things we need them to do in the run game. And, uh, and then after that, you don't have a, a lot of experience. And again, we've talked about that uh, several times just in regards to some guys like a Llewellyn and, uh, uh, you know, that's been banged up and Caden Helms as, as well. Uh, you know, Josh Faneuil and uh, Cade McIntyre, two guys that haven't played a lot, but we're really excited about. They got, you know, good size to them and they're athletic. Uh, they don't know what they don't know yet, but they've they've been given a lot of opportunity in fall camp uh, to develop and and uh, be ready to play. So you'll see them, you know, uh, both in teams and and uh, in different packages. Thank you, coach. Thanks. All right, y'all have a good one.